We're on. All right, I'd like to go ahead and open up the Warrington Board of Alton meeting for Tuesday, November 5th, 2024. If everyone would please rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance with us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> All right. Introduction of new employees. Good evening. Uh, we have Caitlin Love. She has started with us on October 9th as the utility billing technician. She's been a great asset to the team and is catching on very quickly, and we are so happy to have her. Welcome to board, 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 Caitlin. Board. Must be excited to have you aboard, Caitlin. Yeah. <laughs> Always use good help. All right, next, uh, military banners. Good evening, Mayor and Board. We had five applications submitted uh, for military banners. One was for our U.S. Navy for our Robert Quarter, and the rest were the U.S. Army, Evan Cosgrove, Justin Cosgrove, Madison Halter, and Clifton Wolf. Um, these will be displayed before next Monday. They'll be up, and I believe we have for family members. If they'd like to come up, we can do some pictures real fast. <laughs> You'll be fine. You guys can get on both sides of Madison. Okay. Alderman Quarter, want to get a picture too? No, yeah. I'm good. No, I'm <laughs> trying to do it. We're good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madison, for your service. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next on the agenda, consent agenda. We just have the regular meeting minutes from October 15, 2024. I'll entertain a motion to accept the regular <coughs> meeting minutes from October 15, 2024. So moved. Second. Order, second by Alderman Rowmaker. Roll call vote. Alderman Lang? Yes. Alderman Schultz is absent. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Rowmaker? Yes. <clears throat> Next we have any public comments. <coughs> Anyone has anything they'd like to come up to the podium and speak about, please do. We will allow you five minutes. And we will not answer any questions. No one? All right, we're moving along. Board of Alderman comments. I'd like to say I hope everyone had an opportunity to get out and vote today. And uh, I'd also like to say good luck to the Warrington <coughs> football team uh, this week. Uh, they're this Friday evening. They play uh, for district against Osage, I believe, at 7 30 so seven o'clock seven, seven, oh, seven o'clock looking forward to that home game isn't it yes you i'll be that. you're working chains aren't you yes you I, know what time it starts <laughs> i'm there at six okay ah, all right. <laughs> i'll be there and they are still undefeated correct that is correct until they lose so <laughs> 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 Just to help you out there. <laughs> you guys are quick tonight. <laughs> All right. Next on the agenda, fireworks permit for November 8th. Anyone here to speak upon this? Basically, um, we are just wanting to, from our booster club, fire off like a 15 second firework um, when we win on Friday. <laughs> so we just wanted to get basically city permission to do that. So we filled out the form. Um, <coughs> it's a box firework, one light, and it's gonna be enclosed in a box. So it'll be at the end of the game, basically. And if they lose? Then Boosters is going to have fireworks for the next team that goes to districts, I guess. So They're not going to lose. They're, They're not going to lose. Where they should have most of them around the 
So we can't do it on school property. So we have one of our coaches within the district. Um, we will shoot him off from his house, which is next to Warrior Ridge. Oh, okay. Um, so that you will be able to see them. They are 100 feet fireworks. So like they should go up enough okay. that people from the stadium should be able to see them basically. Okay. That it? So I will entertain a motion to approve the fireworks permit for November 8, 2024 for the Big Big Red Boosters Club. So moved. Second. Alderman Quarter, second by Alderman Lang. <coughs> Roll call vote. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Rowmaker? Yes. Alderman Lang? Yes. 5 0 with one absent. Next up, uh, City Administrator Brandy Walters. Good evening. The first thing I have for you tonight is tourism's recommendation. Um, they met on October 22nd and they're recommending to pay the tribute to Veterans Memorial for utilities, cleaning, and landscaping in the amount of $9,991.17. And this is a budgeted item. They have $10,000 budgeted for this each year. Any questions? No. <clears throat> All right, I'll entertain a motion to approve the tourism <coughs> recommendation in the amount of $9,991.17. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Cullum, second by Alderman Lang. Roll call vote. Alderman Corridor? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Rowmaker? Yes. Alderman Lang? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. 5 0. Yes, bring next. The next thing that I have for you tonight is we currently have $188,079 left in ARPA funds. Um, if you remember, this was from the state. These were funds from the state for to help with when COVID was happening. We spent some of those funds, but we still have this much left. And this will also be part of Megan's budget adjustments tonight. One of the, or two of the <coughs> items that we are asking to purchase with these items, we have to have them allocated to an item or purchased by the end of this year. By December 31st, we have to use those funds or allocate those funds. Uh, we would like to purchase two F-150 police responder vehicles and outfitting, which would be a total of $124,108. <coughs> These would be purchased by through state bid by Joe Mackins or at Joe Mackins. And the other item would be one F-250 for the grounds and maintenance department in the amount of $52,018, which would also be purchased at Joe Mackins through state bid. Any questions? No. <clears throat> All right. I'll entertain a motion to approve the purchase of two F, two Ford F-150 police responders, with outfitting in the amount of one hundred twenty-four thousand one hundred eight dollars. One of them was an F-250, correct? Correct. That was, yep. That's the yeah. next one, though. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. We're okay. voting on those separately. So this is the first okay. one. Okay. The two for the police responder. Okay. Got it. <coughs> Motion. So moved. Second. Alderman Cullum. Motion. Second by Alderman Quarter. Roll call vote. Alderman Cullum. Yes. Alderman Rowmaker. Yes. Alderman Lang. Yes. Alderman Crump. Yes. Alderman Quarter. Yes. This is 501 absent. <clears throat> and I'll entertain a motion to purchase one Ford F-250 for grounds and maintenance vehicle for $52,018. So move. Second. Motion by Alderman Lang, second by Alderman Rowmaker. Roll call vote. Alderman Rowmaker? Yes. Alderman Lang? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullen? Yes. five zero one one absent. <laughs> I have one update for you. Uh, the last time we had talked about Highway M and where the turn lane ends, I reached out to MoDOT. I wanted to let you know. I reached out to MoDOT. They referred me to the Boonslick Regional Planning Commission to add it to our their TAC list for 2024, which they will be meeting in December to approve that list. So hopefully that will make it on their list. Okay. Future. So 
Would you go ahead and explain what that is or would you like? So <laughs> what we were we were concerned about is when you're turning off of 47 going east onto Highway M, there's two turns, two turn lanes. The one to the south currently ends in the front of the shopping center <coughs> and we would like to see that continued down to Cool Street so that way the traffic that's going to the schools and that in the morning that would be a dedicated turn lane onto cool instead of stopping there at the shopping center so i have submitted that to modat for them for their planning awesome. <coughs> the other Thank thing you. i have for you tonight is just a reminder that our annual our work session for the budget to go over capital and operating summary is december 10th at 5 p.m that's all i have Thank you. That was December 5th at 5 p.m.? December 10th. December 10th, thank you. <coughs> All right, next up, Finance Officer Megan Walker. Good evening. Uh, you have my financial statements for the month ending of September 24. For revenue, sales tax, we're continuing to see an increase uh, for the general fund of 201,000 year to date, transportation fund 70,000 year to date, and the interchange fund 160,000 year to date. Charges for services were over projected revenues by 45,000. However, the cost of the trash is offsetting that, so it's not really an increase in revenue, um, but over what we had projected. So. Also, the pool um, is bringing in more than anticipated by 20000 Other revenue is, again, the sale of the Willow Road home of 290000 Licenses were over anticipated revenues, 58000 due to all the building permits that keep coming in. Water and sewer fund over expected revenues by 295000 year to date. And the main drivers are the sewer connection fee and the industrial sewer receipts. Uh, then we're under um, on the grant revenue. This is just due to timing, and John is working very diligently to get the rest of those funds in. Moving on to expenses, we're under in in the pool budget due to vacant positions, chemicals, and repairs and maintenance year to date by ninety four thousand. Street is under budget two hundred twenty nine thousand due to the budgeted tra traffic fund study not yet used. Salary-related expenses, vehicle repairs and maintenance, and snow removal supplies. For the water and sewer fund, water is under 122000 in um, salaries and related expenses to, due to a vacant position, pump repairs, electric and gas and fuel, and then sewer is under 104000 from budget due to vacant position, pump repairs, and consulting engineering expenses. My next item for tonight is the budget adjustments. So you guys have all received those. <clears throat> Mainly, this is just a reallocation of funds that were already planned and just kind of putting them where they can be better used or um, if something was inadvertently put to the wrong department, we're correcting that at this point. The only thing that is Increasing per se is the ARPA, which is um, 185,000 of those funds, and we have that cash, so it's not um, jeopardizing cash for the city. And then the other main item is the reallocation of the Veterans Memorial um, construction project <coughs> and reallocating a lot of those funds for big purchases the public works vehicle and a loader. Ordinance on that. Right. Any questions for Megan? Yeah, I, I got one question. Why was the is are are we still going to do that traffic study this year, or is that going to roll over to next year now? It will probably end up rolling over. We're trying to get it done this year, but I don't know that we're going to make it. Okay. And the pool pool management contract is that no longer a, a thing that wasn't that is actually we budgeted for a slide for them to come in and do a slide inspection that's what that line item is and however we ended up not having to have it inspected again this year we had it done last year okay. and it only had to be done every couple of years so we're just reallocating <coughs> to supplies okay. 
Any other questions? No. no. Nope. All right. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 60-24. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Cullum. Second by Alderman Lang. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading of bill number 60-24. So moved. Second. What's it? Give it to them. Motion made by Alderman Quarter, second by Alderman Rowmaker. <coughs> Roll call vote. Alderman Lang? Yes. Alderman Crown? Yes. Alderman Porter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Rowmaker? Yes. Passes 5 0 1 absent. And I had just another thing to add, gentlemen. Um, so John and I were able to go to the BSNA software conference in October, and I just wanted to share with you guys that it was money well spent. We were we brought back so much information. They had it was a phenomenal um, conference. It was three days full of information. They had everything set up for all the different modules and you can go ask questions and we were able to connect with other cities, municipalities and bounce questions off of them and then the experts on those modules and it was just in time for me to start doing the budget so it was it was good. We're looking forward to going back next year and learning more um, and then they were kind of talking about you know new things that were coming out and it was just it was great. They did a really good job. They really care about customer service and it was just nice to see more with the software because I hadn't we hadn't really seen it since they implemented it and came out to train so it was it was good for them to show us new features and tips and tricks and it was good that we both went we were able to divide up the time because one person can't go to all the different opportunities of the meetings of the, the modules because we have several modules here um, so yeah we soaked up as much as we could and they were even able to offer the slides out for us so we can share those with the other employees that um, we see would benefit. So it, it was great. I'm really happy we were able to go. Is there a lot of integration with that software from one department to the other? Um, I mean, finance has a lot of, kind of, yeah. Like I think you know all the people that are in the office are kind of touching different parts of the software. And I say all of them, but uh, I think there's a handful of crossover, like for sure. Brandy, John, and I are looking at all the modules. What I, what I guess what I'm asking is the integration from uh, AP to General Ledger, uh, payroll to General Ledger, that integration between for the software itself. Yeah, so... I would say yes. Okay. Yeah, I would say uh, it definitely all of it pretty much ties with each ties other. Ties together. Absolutely. You want one point. I guess what I'm looking for it was it, it's a one point entry and it updates the other modules. Yeah, absolutely. And okay. one thing that was a great tool for me when I went was how to budget for all the salaries and all the related expenses. You know, initially I thought I had to do it in this one screen. Well, I learned from someone else in another municipality. Um, that you actually budget for it on the payroll feature, human resources feature, and we were never even taught that. So had I not gone, I would have done it <clears throat> completely wrong. So I'm doing a lot of work right now to basically lay the groundwork for next year, and we've changed some things around as far as like creating new processes for how we budget for capital items, just to more streamline it and get rid of a lot of the spreadsheets and you know less room for potential error. Um, you know the less spreadsheets and the more that's in the system the right. better it's going to yes. be. Um, so it's just it's you know it's a lot of work on the front end and it's definitely going to pay off in the long run and I'm already seeing how easy the system is able to talk from one module to the other and link from one module to the other. That's what we want to yeah. see. That's yeah. the it's one, great. one point entry. And, and you know, it's when you get new software like that, you're kind of getting fed with a fire hose. And yeah. <laughs> you need to go to those meetings and get an opportunity to meet other people that are doing the same job that you are because yeah. everybody has a, a little trick. Yeah, and they certainly can't teach you everything when they come out to train, right? And then it's nice to talk to people that are actually doing the job in the, in the real world. You know, it's easy to get trained on something, but until you're actually dealing with the situation firsthand, it's it's hard to. And be careful how you examples. say that, because I used to do that for a living. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was great. Good, good. Glad to hear it. All right. 
Anything else? No. no. Good. Thank you, Megan. Uh, next up, grounds and maintenance. <coughs> Justin Knoll. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, in front of you have our report for October. With, uh, does have any questions about the report? <coughs> A couple highlights from from the month. We completed uh, the fall season at the sports complex on the 26th uh, with the uh, fall baseball and soccer. Uh, game seven hosted three tournaments out there in the month of October. Uh, crew members have completed or almost completed uh, painting all the park buildings at Dyer Park, the pavilions and the bathrooms. Uh, we're going to be repainting the uh, roof on the number two pavilion uh, this coming week, <clears throat> if the weather allows, of course. Uh, we had a couple street trees on city uh, easements uh, taken down on First Street and South Market. Uh, continue to be working on other ones as the as we get into the fall season and stuff. Here's quite a few. Coming up in November, um, we'll be working on the fall cleanup with leaves and uh, again trimming trees and stuff in the city parks just never ends. We'll be uh, winterizing the city parks um, and then closing the bathrooms at Cory uh, and Lakeview Park for the for the winter season. <coughs> I'm sorry, my computer time. Uh, let's see what else. On Veterans Day, we'll be setting up the military flags on uh, Monday morning. I think there's going to be some weather over the weekend, so we probably won't set them out until actually on Veterans Day. So we'll see those go up. Uh, other than that, be working on preparing for the hometown Christmas on December 7th. Uh, a lot of lot of new things coming on for the, the event here. That's about what we'll be working on. Go ahead. I got one question, Justin. Uh, do you have a... <coughs> A specific date when you stop mowing at the cemetery or is it just go by the season or how do you uh, do that? Kind of by the season. Uh, so the guys are working on, they continue kind of mowing the tree lines and stuff as the leaves are coming down. And there's a couple areas that are different types of grass that kind of buzz down. But typically the first week, second week of November is kind it's of Just on a mows. personal note, um, my wife is doing reads across America and can't mark the graves until the final oh, mowing sure. okay. is done. Is there any way I could get you to contact her when it, that's a, the, absolutely? The, yeah, we'll be, we'll be in contact. Last with mowing of the season. Okay, for sure. <clears throat> Thank you. I was just going to say, uh, thanks for the flowers downtown. They look amazing still. Holy cow! <laughs> right. I can't believe those yeah, things are still so going like they're going. Excellent. You guys have done a great job with those. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else for Justin? No. No. All right. Next up, Public Works Director Guy Jeevers. <coughs> Good evening. Uh, first time I have in my monthly report. Uh, the crew has been doing some sidewalk repair off of Dyer Park, Jason Kyle, and Navajo Trail. Uh, some curb repairs off of Roy and some concrete repairs off of East Oak. We had a six inch water main repair off of Cool and a two inch water service off of a Cool. Uh, we had three water shutoffs for the month. The crew has been doing asphalt street cut repair. And we had a total of three sewer calls. Two were on the city, and one was an odor complaint. Any questions off the month off of that? <coughs> it's a quick question on that six inch. Is that just some old pipes that are breaking, or is that, that the to do one? With it was, that was uh, cast. It just broke. Yeah. I mean, it, it usually we'll find a, a trend in a certain area where they starting to break. Uh, I know if you go down the street a little bit, we just replace a whole bunch of water lines through there. So we'll keep an eye on that. And if we start to run into the problem, then we'll come up with a replacement for that section. But that was right in front of the school. And that kind of created an issue because we couldn't shut the school off till school was out. And then we shut it. Then we had to wait a little bit to shut it down for the buses and traffic. So we really couldn't start to... It was like 3.30 or 4 o'clock. Right when everybody was getting home. Right, so we let everybody clear out. I mean, we yeah. didn't want to shut the school off and then sure. they got to okay. tell everybody to go home. <clears throat> Any other questions? No. So the next item I have is approval for SAK construction for additional CIP pipelining for INI. For the amount not to exceed one hundred and seventeen thousand one hundred and fifty seven dollars. And we do have an ordinance for that.
Alright. <clears throat> I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 61 24. So moved. Second. Second. Oh, go ahead. Motion made by Alderman Collum, second by Alderman Lang. An ordinance authorizing execution of an agreement between SAK Construction LLC and the City of Morton for additional work on the 2024 CIPP lining project. <coughs> I'll entertain a uh, motion for the second reading of Bill Number 6124. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Quarter, second by Alderman Rowmaker. An ordinance authorizing execution of an agreement between SAK Construction LLC and the City of Warrenton for additional work on the 2024 CIPP lining project. Roll call vote. Alderman Crump. Yes. Alderman Corder. Yes. Alderman Cullum. Yes. Alderman Rowmaker. Yes. Alderman Lang. Yes. Passes. Thank you. Next item I, I am asking for is two Ford F-150 <clears throat> pickup trucks, 2025 for the amount of 103.974. That is a state bid. I knew I was going to ask for some money. Uh, and you knew what he was. It's been a while. Yeah, he, it's been a while. He's saving it up for Christmas. <laughs> this is your Christmas. I hope you know. <clears throat> All right, I'll entertain a motion to approve the purchase of two Ford F-150 pickup trucks in the amount of $103,974. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Lang. Second by Alderman Quarter. Roll call vote. Alderman Quarter. Yes. Alderman Cullum. Yes. Alderman Rowmaker. Yes. Alderman Lang. Yes. Alderman Crump. Yes. Last time I have is I'm asking for approval for a John Deere compact wheel loader for the amount of $131,573.15. From Siding Tricker Noble out of Herman, Missouri. This is for the wastewater treatment plant. <clears throat> All right, I'll entertain a motion to approve the purchase of a 2024 John Deere wheel loader for the water treatment plant in the amount of $131,573.15. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Rowmaker, second by Alderman Lang. Roll call vote. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Rowmaker? Yes. Alderman Lang? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Guy. All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. By Alderman Quarter, second by Alderman Cullum. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're so adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.